Hey everybody, I thought I'd make a quick video for you on how I address assumptions in Agile when working with Agile teams inside companies. So um, most companies are going to, they use something like this where they define their, their high level themes, you know, for the year. And then they'll say, okay, well, we need to break those themes down into epics, right? And then those epics kind of get broken down into stories because the epics are big chunks of work. And then those stories are kind of broken down into smaller tasks that are usually kind of day-to-day -day stuff. And so the reason behind you know, kind of this work breakdown structure is to keep your kind of day-to-day -day stuff aligned to your stories, aligned to your epics, aligned to the big themes you're working on. The problem I see with it though is up here. So I work with teams where they make, you know, some big assumptions on how they vet the epics, how they get into the backlog. Um, there's a lot of assumptions baked in there. And if you have assumptions baked in there, they kind of trickle down through your entire process. And then you end up people with like, hey, I have no idea why we're working on this. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna march forward and deliver this over several sprints. But you know, if it doesn't have an impact on the business, it's kind of like, why, why bother? And so when I'm working with teams, they're, they're basically using something like this. You know, they're saying, hey, as a user, I want features so that benefit. That's happening a lot at the higher level too, at the epic level. And so what we can do is we can pull from design thinking and say, okay, well, what kind of assumptions are we making in these big chunks of work? Again, I don't do this at so much at the task level, but it's higher up because you want to know, hey, you know, are we making big assumptions here that we need to learn about sooner rather than later? And so, for example, this idea of like, do we know, is it desirable? And a lot of that ends up being around the user. You know, do we have any data that says this is the user or customer we should focus on? A lot of it may actually also come back to the benefit they're looking for. So for example, um, is there a kind of a job pain and gain you're solving for? And then, you know, is, is this uh, backed by evidence, you know? And, and if you're wrong there, it's really hard to recover no matter how well, how well you build it. And then the other theme is around feasibility. So for example, that feature. So that, yeah, that is an output, but you has to, it has to actually meet requirements. It has to uh, meet specifications, it has to be fast enough. It has to be uh, of a high quality, right? It has to work really well. And so um, if you have things in your way from a technical or organizational or infrastructure point of view, or even regulatory that prevents you from going forward, you should talk about that stuff sooner rather than later. And then with regards to viability, I think we make this mistake where we only focus on customer needs, but also that benefit should be to the organization. And so I see this mistake sometimes where we just blindly follow customer jobs, pains and gains, but we never ask the question, is this aligned to our strategy? And so you have to be very careful about that at the org level. If you go after a problem, but you can't make it sustainable, it's not aligned to your strategy, it gets underfunded, you'll still fail in a way even though it's something that, you know, the customers desire. So the viability also needs to talk about the should we build it? Is it impactful? And I say impactful because not every epic or theme has a dollar amount exactly on it, but it should be moving some kind of KPI at that level or something that kind of leads to and is aligned to your strategy. So I help teams basically facilitate, you know, the conversation around this. So for example, desirability assumptions, we'll write those down. We'll write down our feasibility assumptions and we'll write down our viability assumptions. So our assumptions around the user, around the feature, around the benefits, you know, let's get these out of our heads at a high level and, and have a conversation about, you know, how much evidence do we have? Um, so if we take something like as a repeat viewer, I want personalized recommendations so that I can find new shows to watch. Well, you might have some assumptions around like we believe our repeat viewers actually need help finding shows. <laughs> Maybe they're fine and they don't really need our help. It might actually make the you know experience worse if we start shoving other things in there. Um, we believe we have enough viewer data to actually deliver personalized recommendations. Um, yeah, I mean, you might have the data, but it might not be in a great format, or you might not be able to use a, you know, the algorithm to actually serve things up, you know, properly. And then, you know, from a viability point of view, you know, we believe this is actually going to increase viewer retention. So kind of going back up to that theme level, if our theme is about viewer retention and we're working on things that don't actually help that, you know, maybe even hurt that, then we just have to have that conversation, right? And not just march down, you know, several sprints worth of work. And so uh, basically what I do is assumptions mapping here. And so I draw out a line with them and I say, hey, have evidence and no evidence, and then important and unimportant. And so as a team, we'll say, hey, do we have any evidence that our you know, viewers need help finding new shows? Nope. Well, that's pretty important. And if that fails, it doesn't matter kind of what else we do. So we should go find out. And then we believe improved show discovery will increase viewer retention. We might have a little data on that, but not much. Um, and it's through a proxies of looking at other competitors. Um, could be an issue as well. And then uh, things like, well, we actually think we can do this, but we um, it's, it's not like the most um, 
important thing to experiment on. You know, for example, I try to stay up here with experiments where we're saying here are the really important things with no evidence. Yeah, we still have to make the recommendation, recommendation engine work, but maybe um, it's not necessarily the most important thing to experiment on right away because if people don't want it, it doesn't matter how well it works. And so the way I kind of approach this is looking at your themes and epics and then basically uh, facilitating a conversation to write down the assumptions we're making about them and then map them out and see what's really important and there's no evidence. And then basically looking and going, okay, what kind of experiments can we run? So if you think about it, look at your themes first, map things out, go after the most important things that have no evidence, and then run experiments. And then once you learn, feed that back into your strategy, right? Feed that back into, okay, maybe there's some other assumptions we're making here, and then help it shape your backlog. So when we talk about this idea of discovery and delivery, I love that, I'm a huge believer in it, but at the same time, you have to make it real and just not a word. And so how do we facilitate conversations where we're working on meaningful, meaningful discovery work that also inform our delivery work? So here's one way I approach it. It's basically a facilitated conversation about the big things at the theme and the epic level.